Hi guys, so this is part three of the comic reading of All-Star Comics number eight, the Justice Society story. So I think this will be the final part. From the meeting of the Justice Society, the Hawkman wings his swift and silent way through the still reaches of the night to a lighted campfire in his hidden valley of the Hawk. You'll be alright in a while, Watkins. Then you can tell me where Shear is, and what your partner Hunt is doing. Oh, oh, you still here. I, uh, what happened? Your pal Hunt jabbed you with a needle. Now tell me all about yourself. And more important, where is Shira? That double-crosser Hunt. Sure, I'll tell you. Uh, he jabbed me with that stuff Professor Elvis sent him. I'll fix him. Some few days before in a cabin near Hawk Valley. I told you my idea in buying out that press clipping board bureau would play pay dividends. All we do is look through the files of old papers and get the dirt on somebody. Here's an item about Professor Preston Neville, president of the trust company. What do you know? He used to be a jailbird. And then we collect. It's marvelous how some people will pay just to hide a mistake made years ago. Well, those mistakes pay dividends. So it looks like he has an eye patch. It kind of looks like Nick Fury. That's what he reminds me of. But there, it's done. And if we do not receive the 50000 by midnight at Mount, Mountain Lake Lodge, we send our information to the papers. Come alone. At the lavish home of banker Preston Neville. That sentence I served in Utah. So far away, so long ago. Someone has found out. But it's got to keep quiet. My position, my wife, my children. It would ruin everything. For two days he broods, and on the evening of the third day, at dusk, he travels up to Hawk Peak. I can't pay, and I can't face the disgrace. I'll, I'll end it all, over Hawk's Peak. Someone using that deserted road up, road up the peak. I've got to learn why. He's going over. He'll be crushed to death on the rocks below. Man and car be begin the long 2,000-foot drop. Dropping like a plummet, the Hawkman dives swiftly. You shouldn't have tried to kill yourself. If you got something on your mind, tell me about it. I'm the Hawkman. Maybe I can help you. Well, it's blackmail. I'm a bank president now, but I spent time in jail years ago. I think this comic might be the first appearance of Hawk Girl. I'm not entirely sure. Um, well, Hawk Girl first appeared in Flash Comics number one. But I well. At the, I think this is one of her early appearances anyway. I, I don't know if this is her first appearance. But who's this, Hawk? The, this chap tried to kill himself. I think we can talk him out of it. Tell me the names of these blackmailers. I'll uh, make them see their mistake. He, well, there are two of them. Hunt and Watkins. And if I'm not mistaken, they've had a cabin not far from here in Mountain Lake. A great man. Do you think he can he will help me? He will, and so will I. I'm going to follow him. Chin up and keep, keep him flying. That's like the fourth time they said that. Jeez. Uh, anyway, in her flight, Chiara approaches the mountain lodge. A brilliant physicist owned that lodge and worked uh, the electrical experiments there. Looks like I showed up before the Hawkman. In the lodge ahead of her are Watkins and Hunt. Look, that bird. No, it isn't a bird. It's a human being flying. Maybe it's the Hawkman. If it is, I'll get rid of him with that lightning thrower. The old guy who lived here before us discovered. No, no, anything but that. Death. To be killed by electricity. No, no. You're a brave guy. Except when it comes to electricity. You always had a crazy fear of being electrocuted. This ain't you, Hunt. It's the Hawkman. Watkins throws a switch. There, thus sends the Hawkman. Huh? Afraid of electricity. That's ridiculous. But being crushed to death? Ugh, that's what horrifies me. The poor Hawkman. What a death, what a death. The radio control lightning strikes Shira, who has been mistaken for the Hawkman. Oh! Breathing under the terrific blow, Shira falls apparently lifeless. Meanwhile, the Hawkman approaches with his trained fighting hawks. What? Another Hawkman! With thousands of birds. I'll turn them both into bits of lightning. Uh, no, no, I couldn't stand that. 
Hunt rushes into the cab and locks his partner out. No, no. I can't stand thinking of anyone else being killed that way. Let me in, you idiot. Put that gun away. It might go off. You won't get me. I'll kill you. The Hawkman moves swiftly, knocks the gun aside, and swings with terrific strength. Says who? The Hawkman smashes in the cabin door. Mm, I thought there were two of these fellows from Neville's story, but the cabin's empty. Crouched under a slightly lifted trap door, Hunt watches what goes on. You'll make Watkins blab, or Watkins blab. I'll shoot the solution into him. Professor Elba told me it will drive him senseless. Reaching his arm through the trap door, Hunt drives the needle into Watkins' leg. No one here. I guess I might as well go. As the Hawkman flies off with Watkins, the man regains consciousness and goes berserk. Where am I? Let me go! I'll kill you! I'll kill you! What happened to him? He's gone mad. I'll have to knock him out. I'll tie him and leave him here for a while with one of my birds to guard him. The Hawkman binds Watkins securely and lights a fire to keep him from freezing. Wheat! I gotta go to the Justice Society meeting. Now, but he'll be safe here. You keep an eye on him, Red. And so, when the Hawkman returns from the meeting, he has discovered Shear's disappearance. So you shot down Shear with a lightning bolt. I've got to find her. I've untied you, but don't try to escape. My birds are watching you, Watkins. I can't escape, eh, Mr. Hawkman? You watch me. Your birds, bah! He leaps down the face of the cliff, dislodging stones as he runs. I can make it down to the old road that circles his place. The action of the falling stones causes a vibration that loosens a huge rock. The rocks roll down the grade towards the fleeing man. That rock is coming faster, faster! It, it will crush me to death! Yeah! The death he feared overtakes the ruthless Watkins. Meanwhile, there she is! Shira! Shira! I think she's still breathing. She may still live. He holds the shining surface of his belt of nymph metal to her lips. A soft film of breath forms. Shear is alive. When I find Hunt, I'll get him and Watkins and teach them a few things. They might have killed her. It was the nymph metal in her belt that formed a protective aura around her that kept her alive. The force of shock must have knocked her out. Glad to see you awake and alive again. Now you stay here. You're grounded. I'll wait. And I'll glad to be... Um, or I'll be glad to. Ooh, what an experience. This ground feels mighty good, and this air smells mighty sweet to someone who almost died. Far ahead of the Hawkman is Hunt, waiting for him with a high power rifle. With my telescopic rifle, I'll see him before he sees me. Then I'll pull the trigger and poof, the Hawkman will never annoy me again. But the Hawk's sentinels are not sleeping. A bombing division of the aeronautically trained birds go into action. So the, the birds are taught, well, I guess this is their, like, bird language. He aims a rifle, wheat. Take aim, or he aims a rifle, wheat. Take aim, drop logs. A bullseye. What the? Ow. Those birds. I'll get that rifle and, and pick them off. Such as fate. As his fingers touch the metal barrel of the gun, a perfect electrical conductor, his foot cut touches a live wire of the lightning set. A terrific blast of electricity rips through the cabin. The man who feared electrocution electrocutes himself. The fire that caused that electrical blast... Uh, the, the fire that electrical blast caused will, never, will burn all the records about Neville. Watkins too, so be it. Fate is ordained that they be, be punished by, the, by their own deeds. Hawkman relate, returns to Neville. If I say thanks, it will sound silly. You know how I feel. Now I can sleep nights. Oughtn't we go back to town as Carter Hall and Shiera Sanders and resume our real identities? Not yet. I have a little matter to discuss with Professor Elba, if I ever find him. Professor Elba? Who's he? I don't know. Except that he's the man who created that deadly serum that drives men mad. He's gotta be stopped. But who is he? Where is he? And so the next is the Spectre. The Spectre's supernatural powers proved to, of no avail when the star witness 
and the lottery racket went raving mad. Now with Dr. Midnight's Solution K in his possession, the grim ghost plummets down towards the city jail. Louis uh, Scannoli is in the hospital ward. If I succeed in restoring his sanity, he'll tell all he knows. Here goes. The invisible specter moves silently from room to room. Strange. I've looked everywhere, but Louis Scal Scaloni isn't here. There's something mighty puzzling about behind this, and I've got to find out just what it is. With, Within a deserted alley, the specter materializes into his identity as Jim Corrigan in the twinkling of an eye. Now to see the warden. Moments later, he re-enters the jail, but this time is the hard-fisted detective. Warden, I have a tip, uh, Scallon. Is Scaloni is no longer here. What happened? He's, uh, he's being captured to the care of his si transferred to the care of his sister at, her 888 Westside Avenue. Bit auricular, isn't it? Releasing my witness? Come now, Corrigan. You know his condition is incurable? Besides, well... Boss Williams wants the release. Later. So the boss himself is behind this. Here's 888. Well, a vacant house. No sense quizzing the warden and further. Any further, he's just a political job holder. Afraid to question any orders from above. I'll visit the boss myself. Or the boss himself. Mr. Williams is not. I'll find out for myself. Jim's supernatural intuition has informed him the butler lied. Now he breaks in on a friendly gathering. With Professor Elba's medicine, we're sitting on top of the world. Look! Say, what's the idea of breaking in like this? Who are you, anyway? I'm J Detective Jim Corrigan, and I'll ask the questions, Boss Williams. I'll have you thrown out the force. Where is Lou Louis Scaloni? Uh, take it easy. No need to get excited. But at that instant, nice work. I'll make believe I got knocked out. Later, as Jim apparently revives to find himself in the grip of Boss Williams' thugs. Well, Mr. Budinsky, since you're anxious to know more than is good for you, I'll show you around the place. One of these days, I'll have the pleasure of showing you to a cell. Uh, oh. This is my private museum. See these? Police shields. Some of my trophies. Each belonged to some copper who had an accident. Right after crossing my path. Why, you? This gavel belonged to a judge who sent one of my boys to jail. He won't need it anymore. Why are you telling me all this? Because it won't make much difference to you. And I like to show off. But you wanted to know about Scaloni. Well, here's my the private item of my museum. Yeah! Here's a choice specimen of stool pigeon. Notice how the light scares him. Scaloni was brought here for two reasons. I don't want to take a chance of him of recovering of his sanity and talking. And then he lends such a nice touch to the place. Of all the monsters. Whipping out his hypodermic, the boss, Williams, injects it into Jim. Don't let the things I've shown you, uh, dis- Wait, what's that word? Discourage? Or disturb you? This medicine prepared by Dr. Elba will make you forget them. All right, Boss Williams, have your fun. But my turn will come soon. As the needle is applied to the invisible specter, escapes from Jim's material body. He's fainted, and he's supposed to be tough. Why, he's dead died of fright. Blazes, I didn't want that to happen. The invisible specter plunges his needle from into Scaloni's arm. Solution K ought to bring him out back to his senses. That voice, out of empty air. What? The grim ghost materializes as Scaloni's senses return. Where am I? I want to talk to Detective Corrigan. First, you come with me. Ugh! We went right through the wall. Up they zoom, up through the star cluttered universe. I know just the perfect spot. Yee! They ought on a distant asteroid. This place hasn't been discovered by astronomers yet. You'll be safe until I finish my business with the other boys. 
Don't forget me. As the specter returns into Scaloni's deserted cell. What do we do with the body? Dump it in the river? That would be a pity. I like to keep it for my museum. Say, what's that light in Louis' cell? The response to the man of darkness' mental command, the dim light waxes to blinding brilliance. The joint must be on fire! It hurts my eyes. Uh, it's, it's coming. Or I'm coming, I don't want to, but I can't stop. Boss Williams, come here. Um, it ain't Louis, it's the Spectre. Or the Spectre. And now how about joining me? No! To the amazement of his pop-eyed thugs, William's body passes completely through the metal bars without budging them. E.T. And now to attend to you boys. He's coming after us, right through the bars. On second thought, I'll permit Detective Corgan to make the arrest. But, but he's dead. Out goes the specter and in comes Jim Corrigan. Does this feel like a dead man? Later, Corrigan deposits the thugs at the police station. Nice work, Jim. Now only, only if you bring in the boss, you get a week's vacation with pay. I'll take up that offer, Chief. I'm going after Williams right now. Before I'm finished, he, I'll prove he's the real head of the lottery racket. Scaloni's the only one who could give us the lowdown. And he had to go daffy on us. Well, keep him flying, Corgan. Moments later, a suspector reaches the distant asteroid. <laughs> it's back to Earth for us. Woo, I was afraid you'd completely forgotten about me. Scaloni, go within there and confess. Whatever you say, Spectre. Under the grim ghost's mystic spell, Scaloni confesses everything. That's my whole story. Can you beat that? Scaloni comes in here, sane. He gives us a, f a full confession, and he doesn't even remember how he got out of the nut house. Meanwhile, one other piece of business to finish. Boss Williams must tell what he knows about Professor Elba, who's behind all this. But as the specter enters the cell, he sees, I shouldn't have left that coward alone. He's killed himself. Well, anyway, that's one job finished. Wonder if any of the other Justice Society members have gotten on Elba's trail. And the last one is a Johnny Thunder story. So armed with a supply of Solution K, Johnny Thunder starts on his quest. A shot of this stuff will bring Oscar de K. Doodle, the fake contractor, back to his senses. He'll confess and Johnny's pet Thunderbolt wants to help him. This is a house, but gosh, how do you get in to see a guy who thinks he's an ape? I could help Johnny. When Johnny utters the magic word, say you, say you, the Thunderbolt does anything he says, but Johnny wants to do things on his own steam. Scram, this is one job I'm going to handle without you. Mystery men are always doing things like this. That open window is a break. Meanwhile, inside the house, to think that I only used to be th only the butler here. We told you be sitting pretty if you slipped old doodle the needle johnny takes a flying leap well here goes made it but say how do you stop uh, well how you do how you mr doodle be seeing you yeah who's this say what's the idea tough guys that's meat for us mystery men that's i came here to rescue doodle but first this is for you Poor Johnny hasn't got what it takes to be a mystery man. So mystery man means a superhero back then. That's what that means, mystery man. Ow, that hurt. What, was that supposed to be funny? I don't like fresh kids. What do we do with him? Just toss him into the, in the room with old Doodle. He'll do the rest. Company for you, Doodle, old boy. Yeah! I'm too soft-hearted to watch what's gonna happen to that kid. Me too. Let's just forget about him. But Johnny has come too. Yee! Now? No, you dope. What do you think I got this solution K for? The blow lands on the upturned needle. Yeah! Instantly, Doodle is his old self again. Now, let's see. I was about to give you a full confession, young man, wasn't I? That's right, because I had the goods on you. But let's get out of here. You see, you're in bad company here. 
my butler the scamp, with uncouth persons. I'd like to go back and fire him. There isn't time. First I gotta get your confession so I can throw you and the rest of the crooks in jail. Uh, in a nearby restaurant. Two hamburgers, pen, and ink, and a lot of paper. <laughs> That's a funny order, but every man to his taste. Oscar K. Doodle writes a full confession. So you're not a real crook after all, Mr. Doodle. No, that's what I was trying to tell you when my vile butler came in and jabbed me in the arm. As soon as I found out the racketeers who run the supply houses were selling me colored sand instead of cement, I was going to tell the district attorney that you came in. Gee, I'm disappointed. I thought I ca caught a real crook. Well, with it, this information... You can round up the whole crowd. Well, that's right. You eat both the hamburgers, Mr. Doodle. I'm going to be busy for a while. Keep them flying. At police headquarters. Look what I've got here. Stop everything. He's a lunatic. Get him. But the chief reads Doodle's statement. This is something. Round up the riot squad. I told you. Oh boy, is Johnny proud. There's Daisy and her dad. Hello, Daisy. Uh, you can't win, Johnny. Oh, father, did you see that? A car full of policemen taking Johnny away. He must have done something terrible. I knew he'd come to a bad end. But Johnny is really doing an important job this time, and without the help of his thunderbolt. This is the place, men. Up and at him. Inside the plant. This colored sand looks like real cement, only it don't hold the buildings up. What's the diff? Our customers have to be satisfied, or else. But again, justice triumphs. Caught, red-handed. Where's the rest of the gang? They're out getting more business. At that moment, the gang is doing a little salesmanship. But your cement is no good. Look how wobbly that building is. Ha ah, ha, it does look a little shaky. But again, Johnny is on the job. The leaders of the gang, nab them. Stop. It's the cops. Let's beat it to the on the building where we can machine gun them. Hey, it's wobbly here. A building like this ain't safe. There ought to be a law. The shaky structure crashes. Help eek! We'll talk, but get us out of this mess. You look nice and cozy in there. Well, the boys will be busy for a while. I'll hustle over to Doodle's place and clean up things before the cops get there. Johnny feels real tough now. What? You here again? Yes, and in two minutes the whole police department will be surrounding the place. Surrender? I think this guy's loony. Johnny falls to the floor and rolls under a table, and then... He was right. We are surrounded. No one knows that Johnny is still under the table. This about cleans up the whole gang. Just as I was beginning to enjoy the high life. Then as Johnny comes to, a sinister figure enters the room. No one home. Funny. I was supposed to meet the boys here. I put them in jail, Professor Elba. And that's where you're going. We can talk that over in my laboratory, my young friend. Well, so far, Johnny hasn't used his pet thunderbolt, but look where it's gotten him. So you, you young whippersnapper, you think you could undo my good work? Gee, I'm glad Daisy can see me like this. Look who's here again. I'll get a nice fresh shot of this virus for you. How about it, Johnny? Let me poke him once, just once, say the word. No, that's what I say, you understand? But willy-nilly, Johnny has pronounced the words, magic words, say you. He doesn't realize it, uh, but the Thunderbolt Guild does. Goody, goody, now I can have some fun. Now this won't hurt a bit. You, Toad. Oh, how I wish the members of the Justice Society were here. In a flash, the Thunderbolt gathers up the members. Wow, it's Johnny's Thunderbolt. Johnny must be in trouble. I hope we get there in time. At this rate, we will. Professor Elba finds himself surrounded by the members of the Justice Society. Gosh dang it. I did cough in my thunderbolt after all. Johnny, who is this man? Before Johnny can answer, the wily professor switches out, out the lights. Hey, lights! He's fooled us again. When the lights go on again, the vicious professor is, is gone. He's gone into that dark cell where he keeps his patience. Patience. So that's what's happened to those gangsters who disappeared. 
Why isn't Dr. Midnight here? Hey, Thunderbolt, you'll have to make a special trip for him. The Thunderbolt does. You see, Johnny's first wish was for the members only. Professor Elba's in there. Midnight after him. Th this will be a pleasure. Or, woohoo, or hoo hoo. Dr. Midnight confronts the corner Professor Elba in the darkness. But what's this? Professor Abel, what are you doing here? Aren't you a victim of this Elba too? Uh, why, yes. Come closer, friend. Realizing that Dr. Midnight does not know him as Professor Elba, he strikes suddenly with the virus needle still in his hand. I'm Professor Abel and Professor Elba, you fool. It's the same name still spelled backwards. But Dr. Midnight sidesteps the blow and the culprit jabs the needle into his own arm. Oh! He immediately goes raving mad and crashes through a window to his doom. Yeah! Thus ends the short and terrible career of Professor Elba, a victim of his own viciousness. Fine work, Dr. Midnight, very fine. We can be proud of our newly acquired members. You said it, and let's make Hootie our official mascot. Yes, let's give three cheers for our new members. Dr. Midnight and the Sand and Starman. They both have earned their spurs. And I think that's... Yeah, there's like an average, so... They all invite you to the next meeting. And it talks about... Uh, yes. What is it talking about? Yeah, it's kind of just... I don't know, just kind of a uh, jibber. Anyway, hope you guys enjoy this video. If you could like, comment, and subscribe, uh, that'd be appreciated. Um... Yeah, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys later.